Joining us to talk about gambling and when it became harmful and when it becomes harmful is Louisa Mason, who is Senior Policy and Communications Executive for Royal Society for Public Health. Good morning, Louisa. Thank you so much for joining us. I wonder if we could start. Could you tell me how much of a problem is gambling in England? Morning, Lisa. Really Morning. pleased to be here. Um, well, yeah, gambling is, is a bigger problem than um, a lot of people realise. Um, it's quite difficult to know the exact um, extent of problem gambling um, in England and in the UK as a whole because it's not actually recorded in the most um, consistent and standard way as we kind of record other um, public health issues like smoking or drinking alcohol or um, childhood obesity. So we've got different estimates of um, how many people um, in England and in the UK experience problem gambling. So the NHS estimates that around 245,000 adults in England are problem gamblers. But then that figure really ranges because another poll done by um, YouGov estimated that up to 1.4 million adults in Britain are problem gamblers. So we've got a really big range there of between a couple of hundred thousand and potentially over a million people who are problem gamblers. And that's just um, within the adult population. So if you look at children, there have been surveys done that estimate that around 450,000 11 to 16 year olds gamble on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And that of those 450,000, about 55,000 of them experience gambling problems. And when I say gambling problems, this can be really, really wide ranging from not just kind of, um, I guess what you might think of as kind of financial problems and getting into debt, um, but that can, you know, have a really wide ranging impact on mental health. Um, a lot of gamblers kind of experience stress related to their gambling and, and mental health issues. Um, it can also affect physical health as well and relationships um, and, of course, employment and, and education if it's children who are gambling. Um, and right at the kind of most extreme end of, of gambling harms when we talk about the harms from gambling um, is suicide. There have been suicides linked to, to gambling and to gambling addiction. So, you know, although we don't have necessarily the best grasp on how many people it's affecting, we do know that, that it's got really wide ranging impacts. And some studies have actually estimated that up to 20% um, of, of the general population experience harm. Um, either directly as a result of their gambling or because of somebody else's gambling. Mm -hmm. So this, this has been kind of estimated at around for every one person who has a problem with gambling, between six and ten other people are actually affected um, due to those sort of wide-ranging impacts that I've mentioned. So it really is, it is quite a big problem and yet perhaps not as well known or as talked about as some other um, kind of more traditional sort of addictions that we might think of. And um, you mentioned 11 to 18 year olds. What what form of gambling are they doing in general? Because I, I, I've got an 11 year old and so that absolutely blew my mind. Yeah, well, surprisingly, a lot of people don't realise actually that there are a few um, a few forms of gambling that um, are legal for, for any age um, to participate in. So if you think of um, your classic kind of arcade um, and the penny pusher crane grab machines, those are actually legally a form of gambling and children can play on those. But those aren't necessarily the, the biggest issue here. It's more the, the online gambling space where you are in theory meant to be um, 18 years or older to, to be able to play um, online online gambling and yet the verification processes aren't clearly kind of in place and as robust as they as they should be or compared to um, you know going down to a betting shop for example so we know from our own research that um, under 18s abuse their parents credit and debit cards to to gamble online um, and then there's this kind of other side to it, which is a merging of um, the online gaming world and gambling. So um, a lot of kids obviously play video games and within video gaming, um, there's this phenomenon of loot boxes, which is where um, you essentially pay um, to unlock a prize in the game. And when you're paying for that prize, you don't know what it's going to be. So it is essentially a gamble, um, although it's not legally um, seen as being a gamble. And those are prevalent in, you know, some of the most popular games like FIFA, for example. Um, mm. And again, from research that we've done with young people, they see buying a loot box um, as a form of gambling and think mm. that it is kind of impacting their health in a negative way. Um, and yet, you know, at the moment, there's no kind of laws around regulating that as gambling. So 
young kids are really getting exposed to all types of um, of gambling from from quite a young age. When I think, and this is wrong, and this is why we're we're highlighting some issues today. We're doing it again in drive time at four o'clock. Um, but you know, when I think of somebody with a gambling addiction, I tend to think of uh, that stereotypical somebody hanging around a betting shop. But actually, life makes it much easier to to get involved in gambling in any level now even playing the lottery is a form of gambling which I can do on my phone at home I don't need to go to the shop um, there are bingo sites um, and what once I started looking into this gambling issue for this special today um, I then started really paying attention to those bingo adverts on TV which sound like all the girls having fun together um, but it, it's a form of addiction yeah, you're absolutely right. It is it is a form of addiction, and perhaps it is slightly kind of lesser known than some other other addictions. And and you're right that it is because of that online environment. Mm. So you know it's really really easy um, to access online gambling twenty four seven. And you know it's not like with the betting shops. The betting shops close at the end of the day, or mm. you think about drinking, for example, the pubs shut at the end of the evening, and that's it. You're kind of you're done. Whereas with gambling and online gambling, everyone with a smartphone has instant access 24-7 to whatever kind of website they want to and get hold of. Has that, sorry, I'm rushing now because we've got to get to our news um, in less than a minute, but has it got worse during the pandemic? Yeah, so we found that people have um, sort of changed their habits through the pandemic. So 15% um, of regular gamblers did report spending more time and more money gambling in the pandemic. And um, we know that more people have been using self-exclusion schemes. So GAMSTOP, which is um, the national self-exclusion scheme, they reported a 21% increase um, in exclusions just in February 2021 alone. So we know that, you know, regular gamblers, they're spending more time and more money and they are trying to access help. So it definitely has shifted habits and um, we're seeing that in the data. Um, listen, thank you so much for your time. As I said, we are talking about this again throughout the show, through our, our phone in. And again, during four o'clock, we've got some and some more experts like yourself, Louisa, talking about it. Thanks again for your time. Uh, really appreciate it. And if you feel you are in need of support for a gambling problem, there are national websites such as Be Gamble Aware. Locally, we have Beacon Counselling Trust. And at four o'clock today, as I've been mentioning, Andy Ball will be presenting a specialist hour looking at women in gambling. And we'll be speaking to Liz Riley from Bet No More and Beacon Counselling Trust and many more.